Hi, this is Yolanda Brown and you're watching Factory 78. Welcome to Factory78.com exclusive interviews I am Ari Shokwe, and here with me is the lovely musician, composer, saxophonist, <laughs> Miss Yolanda, uh, I'm afraid, Dr. What? Yolanda Brown. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> how are you doing? Much. I'm fantastic. It's great to be speaking to you today. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, I started off with saying Miss and then I moved on to I Dr. Know. You were just... Um, Given a awarded a doctorary yeah. honorary doctorate degree from the University of East London. Exactly. Days ago, it's my first time being addressed as doctor, so thank you for that. <laughs> I'm a bit uh, <laughs> a bit shy about yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, your academic feats, except you know, you went, you studied at university, mm. your first and second degree. Mm -hmm. We have to say hello <laughs> for that, and then to be finally given something like. Mm. A doctor, you know, a doctorate for arts, yes. you know, something that you've studied for quite some time. How does that make you feel? Well, I mean, the funny thing is, it's something that I haven't studied. Um, it's something that I've just enjoyed doing. Mm. Um, I was never taught to play the saxophone or to express myself through music. And so to know that just going on tour, performing my own tracks, writing my own tracks, and basically getting out on stage and doing me um, was enough for um, the University of East London to recognize that and, and really amazingly <laughs> honour me with uh, an honorary doctorate which is fantastic. Wow, we applaud that anyway. We're really, really happy for that. <laughs> now, I introduced you as a musician, a composer, and a saxophonist. For a lot of the viewers out there, especially people like me as well, musician, yes, mm -hmm. you're a jazz musician, a composer. A lot of people might think, you know, what does that entail? Now, first of all, let's talk talk about the fact that you compose music. What is the difference between composing music and writing music? I think composition um, has more concept behind it, I guess. Um, for me, music is very therapeutic um, and I, I love to tell a story when, when I'm playing. So in terms of a composition, you are sort of writing a story, if you like. Um, I think writing sometimes can be a bit more if you're writing for an advert or you're writing for a film. Whereas composition has got a bit more depth to it, mm. I would say. Uh, and really, every song has a story to it. I, I like to explain it sometimes beforehand or sometimes just go into the song and see what people got from it. Um, and I think that's wonderful without having words, you know, but just using music and using the different rhythms of music um, and, you know, taking from different cultures. I love my Afro jazz, you know, so taking from fella and then, you know, having inspiration from, from different things. Also to Calypso, to R&B, to gospel, it can take you anywhere. And then you create these emotions, which the listener then gets to enjoy. Well, brilliant. Now, <laughs> One of the interesting parts of um, having a look at what you've done and just learning about you, born and raised in East London, to beautiful Jamaican parents, the West Indies, <laughs> explain the influence of you know the West Indies in, in your upbringing, especially music. What, what was the influence for you? Definitely, I think um, the basic word would be rhythm. You know, I think, um, especially with the Caribbean, there's, there's a, an easy rhythm, yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that runs with not just reggae, but you got you know skia, you got calypso, you got mento, taking it back. Soca, soca. Yes, we can even go there. <laughs> and I think that that inherent rhythm was something that let me express myself. Um, I think sometimes with. I don't know, I think with, without that culture, you mm. sometimes have to learn it and something that's inherent, sometimes people really take from that and I think that was a, a big starting block for me. Um, also, with, um, my father loved music. He was playing the CD player every Saturday morning. And so, you know, I, I didn't just get the Caribbean influence, but I heard classical, I heard folk, I heard so many different types of music. And I think from there, it was just inherent. I didn't know why these rhythms were coming out of me when I played the saxophone, but it was in there somewhere, you know. Some 
Yeah, exactly. Now, saxophone, you just mentioned the saxophone there, and a lot of people would think, you know, beautiful, gorgeous lady, you know, just saxophone. <laughs> you know, we grew up with, you know, legends like Fella, you sure. mentioned there, Miles Davis, mm -hmm. Hugh Masekela mm -hmm. from South Africa, and of course, for the younger folk as well, Kenny G. You yeah. know, these are people that went from saxophone to trumpet to flute. Mm -hmm. All of them had one thing in common. They were all men. Now tell me, Yolanda, who was like your inspiration growing up, especially in the jazz instrument, instrumentalist sure. you know, genre? It's funny, you know, I think um, I take inspiration as a, a very strong word. You know, I think I love to be inspired by everything that's around me. Um, it could be a kid that's pushing through and their grades through a hard time, mm. as well through to, you know, musicians and, and things like that. So for me, I used to listen to a lot of Monty Alexander as a, a pianist, a Caribbean pianist, um, along with a lot of sort of Grover Washington. But as I say, I listen to such a wide variety. I don't think it was particularly somebody I watched and thought, well, I want to be that. You know, I think really, and I always say this, I am just being me. And it just happened. I went through a range of instruments when I was young, from the drums, piano, violin. And the saxophone, for me, just felt like a natural extension. It felt like my voice. Mm. And then just playing it, really, was, was where it came from. Um, and now, obviously, you get to listen to more musicians and you can really understand then what the saxophone is doing or what jazz music is doing and from there i think then i got inspired but it really felt very natural to play to wow. play that instrument. now you said you weren't really taught mm. how to play the, the, the saxophone sure. what about the saxophone just made you feel this is the instrument for me i think it's a very soulful instrument everybody says it you know mm. you meet people and say oh the saxophone's my favorite <laughs> it's always everybody's <laughs> favorite isn't it? No, exactly exactly so it's a very soulful instrument so to be able to create that sound mm. is just amazing you know um seeing somebody play the saxophone for the first time as well and it's it's hard at first and you get into it but then you can actually see that light come on inside someone and lots of people own saxophones at home and and they'll blow every now and then <laughs> but i think to be able to create that soulful sound there's there's nothing like there's it nothing like yeah it. now music saxophone jazz you know this is a genre that has been kind of attached to you but you've dabbled you've put your feet in in a whole <laughs> different type of music as well we're yeah. going to be definitely going into that now but the other thing that really really um made me feel like wow was mind blowing about your stats mm. is the people that you've worked with yeah. some of the legends that you've worked with the names that really really hit me mm. alexander o'neill yes. and the temptations <laughs> tell me how you feel growing out you know growing up in london you're a jazz musician mm. basically unknown unknown to us here in the uk and then have the opportunity to work with some of the biggest musicians mm. that have ever graced the stage i mean fantastic you know i think sometimes you just have to let those fluttering emotions pass you by and get the job done first yeah, you know yeah, yeah. i think um with the temptations that's one that i always i always speak about the temptations because i grew up with their music i grew up watching the movies and and listening to their story and then to finally meet them and to meet otis Williams who was the original you know the original temptation and um, it was a 20 date tour around a nationwide tour and on the last date they invited me on stage to be the extra temptation you know <laughs> and that was just something really mind-blowing and I really appreciate actually um, them opening up to me as you say they're legends you know they don't need to deal with small small me um, but they really had open arms greeted me so wonderfully every time it was like being part of the family and I really learned that and, and have taken from that and um, as a musician it's not just about playing to your audience and keeping your audience it's, it's about opening up to the wider family um, and just the way they treated me really I've taken that on and tried to embrace other people that come my way also oh, that's beautiful <laughs> now you were just saying before the cameras went on the fact that you hadn't really put out an album you had done EPs in the past yes. which is now you're working on your first major album so yes. to speak but looking at the kind of accolades that you've received for your work since you started with the EPs now another stat that kind of just just needs to be said the first act to have been nominated in the mobile category the mobile for a no mobile award in the best jazz category yes. for two years in a row first act and then <laughs> you decided to walk away with the awards both years running tell me what the kind of emotions you get like when you get nominated and then you win twice I know overwhelming really I think as human beings, we're forever sort of praying and looking for, um, I don't know, 
a positive notion to know that you're doing the right thing. Yes. You know, yes. as you say, I, yes. I fully love my academics. Yeah. I was studying my PhD and really enjoying management science, which mm. is light years away from away music, from you know? <laughs> and so sometimes... Thank God you stuck to music. <laughs> sometimes you think, well, should I be on tour at the moment? Should I get back, you know? Um, and just having these sort of accolades along the way and people recognising and enjoying what I'm doing, really, it's just a stamp to say, keep going, keep going, you know? Um, it's wonderful to have praise all the time and people, I love your stuff but as an artist you look beautiful well, by the way oh goodness yeah. <laughs> you see there you go I just had to, I had to. <laughs> um, and I think slowly but surely you kind of you're doing these things and you think well I know people like it but do they actually like it mm. and so to win an award to get an honorary doctorate it just lets you know just keep going you know just keep going and being an independent artist there's no sort of big machine behind Behind us pushing us forward so you know it really is fantastic to know that people want to hear the music and I can keep creating it really. Yeah you know I I just said a couple of minutes ago the fact that you've worked with different kind of people in the Mm. industry and different genres as well you've done a little bit with the grime industry, Bashi, Governor B (laughs) you know and I saw I think it was a performance with Governor B that I saw it was a song that both of you had done together which was the story. Now if you haven't seen that just go on YouTube Governor B and Yolanda Brown, the story. Tell me about the writing process for a song like that. When you want to collaborate with a rapper or someone from a different genre of music. You're a composer, a jazz artist, Mm -hmm. and then you've got a grime rapper and a a writer there. How does this merge together? Well, I think for that, I really have to commend Governor B because it was actually my own song. I'd already released the song on my EPs and um, had a studio mix and a remix and a live mix. And so he really slotted into to my to my music. So um, to know that, you know, grime and jazz, um, R&B and soul can really mix together. Um, and he really took on the emotions that I was feeling when I was writing the song and put his story on top, you know. And that for me was really rewarding and um just great writing really but he really took on what, what I'd written for the song. You said you, you you like your Afro jazz as well you know we love people that like Afro jazz but I saw the performance of a massive song where I come from hey. by Fela, <laughs> Fela you know yes. she, you know lady mm-hmm. you know performed on stage you were, I was looking at Yolanda thinking how are you going to be able to handle <laughs> direct this song Fela does so much when performing but you completely tore it up it was absolutely beautiful what made you think you know this is the kind of song that I might perform on mm. stage or do someday <laughs> Well, um, as I say, I love Afrobeat, I love Afro jazz, and really for me in music, it's to take those genres and really embody them in my music um, and put a bit of Yolanda Spice on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a song that I was always playing at university. I don't know why, it just happened to be on my player, and um, the album Shakara I was just yeah. always playing, playing. So I remember the song, and I wanted to write my own Afro. Um, jazz song um, called Festac Town and so I had this and it was going it's going and I thought well let me just see how she got say <laughs> you know <laughs> see, <laughs> happy lady. and see how it felt and it really really worked and so now I can't play Festac Town without adding fella on the end you know to pay homage to him and I just saw the musical also that's just come to yeah, London yeah. fantastic yeah, so now it was, I really enjoy it even more playing no, it was fantastic and I, I think at the point where I was watching a couple of videos by you and, and what you've done on the internet and stuff like that I, I came across a little clip that was describing where people were describing the kind of feeling they got from you playing music and it was almost indescribable because everybody had everything from a little bit of soul yeah. to a whole lot of jazz yeah. and from everything from reggae to a little twist mm-hmm. of reality mm-hmm. now when you listen to people get moved by your music they've described it by being fresh mm-hmm. young soulful rhythmic you know what else do you think needs to be said about the kind of work that you're putting together I, th- I think they say it all really um for me especially you keep saying jazz artists jazz artists but there's so many 
types of jazz yeah. out there that it, sometimes it's quite hard to place yourself. But for me, as long as the audience loves the music, yeah. I can keep making it. And that's for me, I don't have to adapt myself yeah. to be like somebody else. Um, and I'm glad that people get it. It's a range of emotions. If you come to a Yolanda Brown concert, you're going to dance, you're going to laugh, you're going to reminisce, you're going to, you know, hug the loved one next to you, even if you don't know them. Yeah. <laughs> and that for me is, is going through a journey of emotions. Yeah. And when I first started out and I tried to explain this, I don't think people really understood it. But yeah. once you come and you feel it, that's when you know it goes on and on and I'm so glad that it's got to a position where I can continue to do that and my album will be able to do yeah, that, to do that. And, and continue to just perform live and be emotional there's no harm in being emotional Absolutely you know Absolutely not even the gentleman like being emotional <laughs> trust me now the album we, we, we know you're in the process of making this album mm. that's you know well expected and that you we're looking forward no to pressure. it because no, no pressure <laughs> like I said no pressure but what do you want us the fans to expect from the album that you're going to be putting out pretty soon? I think um, for me, especially as a musician and growing and being self-taught and I know you watch YouTube a lot and you would have seen some old videos yeah. when I stand like this <laughs> <laughs> and to now when you can't even follow me with the camera you know um, and I, that's been in in three years you know so really for me it's progression it's maturity it's growth um, and really enjoying the live feel the live concert feel yeah on a disc in your home you know and for me that that's very important i love performing live take me anywhere i just love to perform live and to really get that on a disc is very hard work and that's what we've been really working towards um, and i'm looking forward to to pushing that out there wow. <laughs> have you made uh, does the album have a name yet or when it, do you think it's going to be out um well next year mid next year it's yeah. going to be out it hasn't got a name just as yet i've yeah. got some ideas but fantastic. it's usually until we choose the, the tracks and put them together then the whole project will come together but uh yeah now, you, for some of us that support yolanda brown and we go on youtube if you want to do that what other places can people just go out and check you regularly, find out updates, your concerts? I know you just did a fantastic show at the O2. Yeah. You know, where can people get regular updates with regards to what you're doing? Uh, my website is uh, yolandabrown.co.uk yeah. um, and we'll update that. Also on Facebook, yeah. Yolanda Brown and Twitter, Yolanda yeah. Brown UK. Um, and I try to update them as much as possible. Um, as I'm writing now, I'm in studio now. I try to say I'm in studio, but <laughs> apart from that, you know, um, but then the tours will start um, after mid next year so I'm excited about that. Wow, we're excited, waiting, looking forward to the album itself. We really can't wait because of the work you've done up till now. It's been three years and you've been so successful so we're wishing you so many more successful uh, you times to come. <laughs> Yolanda Brown and Factory78.com We'll see you next time.